So this is fraction review basic video number three. In this one we're going to look at a little bit more with least common multiples and least common denominators. And then also how do we add and subtract fractions. And when we do adding and subtracting there's going to be two types that we talk about. When the fractions match and when the fraction, or sorry, when the denominators match and when the denominators don't match. So we call that like and unlike denominators. So here's our first part, rewriting fractions with LCDs. So what is an LCD? An LCD is basically just the same thing as an LCM, but instead of a, just a least common multiple, now we're talking about a least common denominator. So it's the smallest shared denominator that both the denominators go into evenly. So why do we need common denominators? Well, the denominator of a fraction tells us how many pieces it takes to make a total. How many pieces in total? Well, if I think about how many pieces it takes to make up a total, that's telling me something about the size of those pieces, right? Think about if I have thirds. Those are all a certain size. Now compare that to fourths. Well, those are different size pieces. And the difference comes from looking at the denominator. So why would we need common denominators? Well, when I add and subtract fractions, I need to be talking about all the same size pieces. So that means the denominators have to match whenever I add or subtract fractions together. So how do we rewrite fractions so that they do have common denominators? I gotta start by determining what the common denominator, the common multiple for those denominators is gonna be. So what's the least common multiple for both denominators? And then multiply the numerator and the denominator of my fraction, the top and the bottom, by the same number, rewrite it so that it's written with that common denominator. So let's do an example. If I have one third and three fourths, I gotta think about what's my common mul whoops, common multiple for three and four. Let me scroll back down. Okay, well, what do three and four both go into? The multiples of three, multiples of four, looks like the first one would be 12. So let's rewrite both of these out of 12. Okay, so to go from three to 12, we said in our directions we have to multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. Well, three times four gives me 12, so 1 times 4, 4 twelfths, and 4 times 3, so I have to do the same thing on top, 3 times 3, or 9 twelfths. So both of these now have common denominators of 12, but they're equal to what we started with. 4 twelfths is equal to 1 third, 9 twelfths is equal to 3 fourths, but now they match in the denominator. How about 3 fifths and 7 tenths? Well, it's pretty easy to see that I would just have to change this to tenths, and then those denominators would match. So five times two to get it to 10. So three times two, six tenths. So now six tenths and seven tenths have matching denominators. So that's important when we add and subtract. So take a second to do this practice. Go ahead and pause. You are going to rewrite these fractions so that they have the same denominator. So find the LCD and rewrite. And then we'll check. Okay, take a second to check. Notice that these aren't going to be simplified anymore. We had to rewrite them so they're not in simplest form anymore, but they're rewritten so that the denominators match. Okay, adding and subtracting when the denominators already match. So we say that when the denominators match, we call that like denominators. So if the denominators are the same, what are the steps to adding and subtracting fractions? Well, write everything as improper fractions first. We don't want to do the problem with mixed numbers. So rewrite it as improper fractions. Add or subtract the numerators. Keep the denominators the same. And finally, simplify your answer if you need to. So, here's a couple examples. 
1 and 5 sevenths plus 2 and 2 sevenths. Well, let's change each of these to mixed numbers. Or sorry, they are mixed numbers. Change them to improper fractions. So 1 times 7 plus 5 would be 12 sevenths. And then 2 times 7 is 14 plus 2, 16 sevenths. Add the numerators. 12 plus 16 is 28 sevenths. And as long as I can't simplify that, I'm done. You could write this as a mixed number if you wanted to. So let's see, 7 goes into 28 three times. That's 21. Nope, sorry, four times. So the simplified answer would be four holes. That's your final answer. All right, how about this one? 3 and 5, 9. So let's rewrite that. 3 times 9 is 27 plus 5, 32 nines. Minus, again, change this to an improper fraction. 2 times 9 is 18 plus 4. So 32 ninths minus 22 ninths is 10 ninths. I could leave it as an improper fraction, or I could change that into 1 and 1 ninth. Here's your practice with adding and subtracting with mixed numbers. Notice that the denominators here all match except for this last one, but you can still do it. So change them into improper fractions first, and then add or subtract. Pause it, try them, and then we'll come back and check. Here's your answers. Notice some of them you could have left it as an improper fraction or rewritten that as a mixed number. As long as it's simplified, reduced all the way, either one is fine. Just make sure you check and see if the directions ask for it to be written a certain way. Um, okay, next we're going to talk about adding and subtracting with unlike denominators. So if the denominators do not match, again, Write everything as improper fractions. We don't want to do the problem with mixed numbers. Rewrite all fractions with your common denominators. So rewrite it with the LCD, just like we did at the beginning of this video. Add and subtract the numerators. And keep the denominators the same. and make sure you simplify your answer. So, here we go. A couple examples together. Write them as improper fractions first. So one times seven plus two is nine sevenths. And I'm gonna leave some room here. Plus, and then two times five is 10, plus two, 12 fifths. Well, 7 and 5 don't match. I have to have common denominators before I can add them. So let's think about our common denominator for 7 and 5. I can list them out, or you might realize 35 is going to be the first thing that they both go into. So I want to rewrite both of them out of 35 with a denominator of 35. Okay, well, to go from 7 to 35, i got to multiply by 5. So i got to do the same thing with the numerator, 9 times 5. And then how do I go from 5 to 35? Well, I multiplied by 7. So 12 times 7 is 84. And then I'm going to add those together. So add my numerators. 45 and 84 is 129. Keep the denominator the same. And then just check to make sure if it can be simplified or not. And it can't, so we're good. Let's try the next one. Rewrite it as an improper fraction. So 12 plus 5. And then, let's see, 6 plus 2 is 8. Well, my fourths and thirds don't match, so I have to get common denominators. 12 is going to be the first thing that 4 and 3 both go into. So let's rewrite it out of denominators of 12. Well, if I have to multiply 4 times 3 to get 12, I got to do the same thing with the 17 times 3. And then to go from 3 to 12, I multiplied by 4. So 8 times 4 is 32. So now, make sure you pay attention, this was a subtraction problem. 
I'm subtracting 51 twelfths minus 32 twelfths. So 51 minus 32 is 19. 19 twelfths would be my answer, or you can write it as a mixed number, 1 and 7 twelfths. Okay, here is your practice for adding and subtracting with unlike denominators. Make sure you rewrite it as improper fractions. Find the common denominator and rewrite them, and then add or subtract. Pause, try these, and then we'll come back and check. So here's my answers for adding and subtracting with unlike denominators. Notice again that you could either leave it as the improper fraction or change that, convert it, and write it as a mixed number. As long as the numbers are simplified, either could be correct. So uh, questions that you have on these problems? Thanks for watching video number three.